Hello everyone, this is Warnog Gamer 4 here with another challenge run video. For this video, we're doing something interesting for a run. And because of the thumbnail, I'm pretty sure you know what it is already. We're doing a Jesus run. Please note that this run is just for fun and not anything serious. With that said, we are going around helping people when we can, and fight as many major bosses as we can. As for our weaponry, that will come as a surprise, but the thumbnail already spoiled a bit of it. Summons are allowed, and we are not going to be using talismans or wondrous physic, because Jesus ain't about that witchcraft. Blasts are A-OK, -okay, as we are not here to suffer, but to have fun and bring the holy power of the Lord to this forsaken place beyond the fog. Anyway, let's get into the run. So let's quickly get out of the intro area, get our trusty horse, we don't interact with Ronnie because she's a witch, and we don't interact with her kind. We help Bok out by freeing him from his tree prison. Now we go into Castle Morn to get one of our main weapons, the whip. According to John 2.15 it is said that Jesus made a whip to drive out animals, or animals, from a temple. Now whether or not he actually did this is very much debated today, but we will take advantage of this to use the whip as our weapon. Because Elden Ring is cruel and always wants to end you. We need at least some self defense. Now we go say hi to Roderica and get a jellyfish. Say hi to Alexander and to Dee as well. We ignore the heresy potion placed here. Now we get the medallion piece at Fort Height. Take the teleport and say hi to Malekif. Get the other medallion piece at Fort Faroff. Farm a bit to level up so we can use the whip. With the help of Yero, we take out the invader in front of Murkwater Cave. Now with that done, we get two pieces of our attire for the run. We also deal with patches real quick and forgive and forget. We meet Raya at the lakes and help her get her pendant back. What a nice girl. We also get an invitation to Volcano Manor. Now we go get the Glintstone Key and head to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel to destroy the crystal abomination stationed here. After breaking its stance with the whip, it gets absolutely destroyed. And we get the smithing bell one. Now off to the coastal cave to beat the boss there and get Bach his sewing kit back. Now we talk to Raya to go the expressway to Volcano Manor. And with how Volcano Manor operates, we leave because Jesus ain't about that. We go and get the golden order talisman for later use along with the second smithing bell in the sealed tunnel. In the wood folk ruin, we get the incantation Wrath of God, whoops, I mean Wrath of Gold. At the Twin Maiden Husk, we get the Spirit Calling Bell and Smithing Stones to upgrade the whip to plus 12. We get Order's Blade from D because Jesus' whip is holy. We also get Roderica to work on spirits. We level up to use at least one incantation. And now we are off of the four belfries to head back to the intro area and quickly take out the grafted scion. With the scion down, we get the Stormhawk King and the Stormhawk in the chest who will be our Holy Spirit Aid. And now just one more thing to do and that's to complete our look. So we farm a bit for the festive hood. And now we need to modify it to change its appearance. So we give it to Bach. And now it looks like a thorn crown that has bloomed. Looks great. With our fashion completed, we level up our health and go hunt down some undead for death roots. Funny how the mariner saved me there. Also getting the Dragon Cult book for later. Eliminate the Mariner at the lakes. Then into the Death Touch Catacombs. And while we're here, we level up. And eliminate the Black Knife Assassin, which was very easy, to gain access to the Death Root inside of the chest. Now onto the Mariner at Altus Plateau. Get another death root. Get the honed bolt incantation because it appears like a smite from God. And after being sniped on our way to the next area, we reach the Black Knife Catacombs to fight the Cemetery Shade. In which I find out that the proper death incantation is worthless against it. Now I believe it's time to upgrade our seal, so I buy a bunch of smithing stones. 
only to find out that the seal uses somber stones instead. Good thing I collected a few while exploring. So we collect five and six to upgrade the seal. Now off to the seal for a river to collect some ghost glove warts to upgrade our holy hawk to level six. We level up our faith a bit, go into the Gilmer's Hero Grave to get the final death route, and after clashing with some enemies, witness a cemetery shade try to teleport onto me, but instead gets ran over, and now we head to the boss, which of course had to be the Red Wolf, and during most of the fight, our spirit did most of the work. With this red wolf down, we get the final death root and give them to Malekith. And after having to retry because of bullcrap reasons, we calm him down and we get the actual incantation that we want. Which is our rock dash boulder throw and a roar which would count as us screaming the word of god at our enemies. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. John 8, 7. Even though Jesus said this to prevent a stoning of an adulterous woman, we will be casting stones at our enemies who wish to kill us. Not only that, but Jesus is sinless. So stones away. And after summoning Roger, who I completely forgot was a wizard, we go and fight Margit. Margit gets absolutely dunked on, and that's specifically because there's three things attacking him at the same time. Margit goes down in about 57 seconds. Margit falls, and now onward into the enemy infested Stonevale Castle. Ignoring almost everything, we summon Nafeli and boost ourselves with some health regen to fight Godric. Where we do a little dodging here and there, do a little whipping of a sinner here and there, and do a little rock throwing here and there. This boss is always is as simple as it gets. And with Nafeli taking most of the aggro, this was pretty much a cakewalk. Godric goes down in about 2 minutes and 8 seconds. With Godric down, we now go into the Academy of Sin. Good thing Jesus is immune to blasphemous magic while opening doors. Now we go on and face the Red Wolf at the debate hall. With the Red Wolf down, we level up, fight the Carrion Knight that's protecting the elevator. Good thing the NPCs don't dodge the lightning, so that made the fight pretty easy. Now it's time to take down some witches and wizards. For Renala's fight, as always, the first phase is pretty easy. For second phase, it's time to dodge, summon our spirit, and then throw rocks at Renala. how weak Renala is to physical damage. Renala goes down in about 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Now we go farm a bit to level up our faith to 35 so we can use our wrath incantation. Even though we're a bit low on the health department, we go and face Radon. With the raid party taking most of the aggro, we take the opportunity to throw rocks and smite him.
Danger Dawn goes down in about 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And I had to retry two times. Now that we have Radon's Remembrance, we bring down a walking mausoleum with the proper death incantation. Probably one of the only times it's ever useful. So we can duplicate Radon's Remembrance for a big old level up. Now off to Kaelid to go fight Commander O'Neill to start Millicent's quest. And after screaming the word of God at him, he kneels and starts repenting. And now we pray for Millicent's self to improve, and go get her a spare arm at the Shaded Castle. And with the team assembled, we go and face off against the Draconic Tree Sun. And after a bit of staggering and bullying, it turns into a 1v1 fight. The fight took about 7 minutes, and I had to retry one time. With the tree sentinel down, we now go to the hermit village to get the prattling pate there. We also get the gold sewing needle near the giant turtle. Now we modify a demigod item. Master. Then give the needle to Bach. Then tell him that he's beautiful, and now we have completed his quest. Did I just hear my mum speaking? Thank you very much, forever in your service. May the throne of Elden Lord be yours. Now we quickly take out the Godskin Apostle at the Windmill Village. With the Apostle down, we now say hi to Millicent. Now let's start doing Brother Corrin's quest. So we go and find the gold mask and tell Corrin, later speak to him, and interact with them again outside of the Colosseum. But to continue the quest, we need a specific incantation, so now we sneak across the roots to fight Phantom Godfrey. With our summon taking most of the aggro, we just whip, throw rocks, and smite the false godfrey. And with one final word of god, he kneels before us, with the fight taking about 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Now with the path open, we head to the left and pick up the prayer book we need to complete the gold mask quest. The only problem now is that it takes 37 intelligence in order to use, so we'll do that later. For now we just level up, and go into the sewers to collect some smithing stone. We also skip most of the sewers by doing a specific jump. Going back to Dragon's Barrow, we get our Somber Stone 8 and 9 to upgrade our seal. Now into the Lakeside Crystal Cave, we quickly beat the boss and interact with the NPC at the end. Who to actually help, we need to go to the village of the Albanarix, talk to Nefeli for her quest, destroy some sinners, get the medallion piece from an old man, and also we must now pray. Now we eliminate the omen killer there with Nefeli. Go back to Latena to help her.
throw some rocks at a sinner. And now we go and fight Morgoth. For the start of the fight, we just go at him like normal. But when nearing the second phase, we summon our Holy Hawk to help us. Who gets bullied pretty bad when we actually hit the second phase. After a few more exchanges, Morgoth falls. with the fight taking about 8 minutes and 51 seconds. And now we pray. Now to fight the clone of his brother in the sewer. Which was a pretty easy but long fight. Had a little too many close calls for my life. With one final shout, Mog falls, with the battle taking about 12 minutes and 26 seconds. Now we make our way down the frenzy pit, level up our intelligence to 29, use the deep root depths alternate entrance, and face off against Fia's champions. With the power of our faith, we take out the sinners in about 3 minutes and 15 seconds. Now it's time to wake up from our coffin nap to throw some rocks at ants. Use the mere presence of Jesus to eliminate slimes. Use the wrong healing incantation and traverse the lake of rot. Now it's time to fight Estelle. Using most of our arsenal and dodging grams and the occasional space rocks. We take down his health and move forward, with the fight taking about 6 minutes and 9 seconds. Now at the mountaintop of the giant, we get a new smithing bell. Take out the glitched stationary mausoleum at Castle Soul for later.
And now we level up to 37 intelligence to finally use the incantation to find out that Radicon and Marika are literally one and the same. And relay this information to Goldmask. Now back at Castle Soul, we fight Commander Nail. Using our summon to take most of the aggro, we take out the knights first. Then after barely surviving his ultimate attack, we throw some rocks at him. And then resort to whipping. And with the final bit of FP I saved up, we end the commander, with the fight taking about 15 minutes and 51 seconds. We get the last piece of the medallion that we need, and quickly take out Gideon's henchmen, upgrade our whip to plus 19, take out Anastasia again with the power of our rock, get absolutely demolished by the mausoleum, Summon and finish Latena's quest and get an Ancient Dragon Somber Stone. With that, we can level up our seal to plus 10. Then go and liberate Castle Height and tell Kenneth. Then give Nefeli the Storm King. We meet them at Godric's Throne Room and get our normal Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. Now we cheese the Sanguine Noble with the power of the Log. To gain access to Mogwin's premium farming spot, to which we do a bit of farming. Then we go into the frozen tunnel to get Smithing Stone 8. Afterwards, we take out Okina. And then head into the Ever Jail. And now we go up to the roofs to punish the archers that have killed so many players. And with all the candles lit, we reach the Hallig tree. Witness an unfortunate soul roll out of the branch because of the ant. and nearly have the same thing happen to us. And now it's time to fight Loretta. Whenever she casted a phalanx spell, we threw rocks at her. And when the horse attacks, we use the Wrath of God-Gold on her. For a second phase, we summon our bird. And after a few more whips, rocks, and lightning, Loretta goes down, with the fight taking about 5 minutes and 44 seconds. Now we talk to Millicent at the mountaintop, level up, go into the rock kindred infested building to reach Melania's grace for later. Now at the stargazer's ruin, we reunite a jellyfish with her sister. And finding Corrin cowering in fear of gold masks and lightning to a true lord. Just look at that T-pose. With that done, we now face fire giant. For most of phase 1, we whip his weak spot.
At the start of phase two, we took out attack after attack. Then summon our spirit, but it gets eliminated really quick. And then for our final attacks, we smite, then send out a wrath of God to his crotch. And fire giant falls with taking about 11 minutes and 19 seconds. Now we level up, do a bit of farming, get some high end ghost glove warts here. Get the last remaining upgrade materials that I need. So we can finally level up our weaponry to the max. Now at the Frenzy Flame Tower, we eliminate Sinners of False Faith. Those will take out Vike quite easily because we're over leveled for this area. So we start going around and duplicating the Remembrance of Radon because he gives out the most runes currently and of Fire Giant. Now we start popping them for a big payout and a big level up. And without the help of the purifying crystal tier or any physics, we go in face mog. In the first phase, we start out by using some good old fashioned rocks, and then start whipping till he gets to his second phase. For phase 2, we summon our aid and start healing through the damage. And now for this phase, we start to exclusively throw rocks. and eventually finished him off with a wrath. Fighting Mog took about 10 minutes and 28 seconds, and I had to retry one time. Now we pop his remembrance and level up our stats after farming a bit. Heading over to Faramazula, we get the grace near the duos, get a new incantation, and now we fight the Godskin duo. At the start, I got fireballed and nearly had to restart. And after getting some distance, we start throwing rocks and using the occasional whip on the fat one, mostly. And when one god skin went down, we take the time to summon our bird for help. Which is perfect for splitting them up, and now it's time to focus on the fat one again. Once he goes down, we take advantage of when they try to respawn their ally and finish them off. With the encounter taking about 6 minutes and 52 seconds. 
and I had to do three retries because of a fat godskin's glitchy attack. Now we continue to run through the area and ignore all the enemies to get to the next race. Now off the cliff we go to lay down and fight Dragonlord Placidusax. Placidusax, at least for me, is a pretty easy fight. Just sticking to its backside is pretty safe and we use the whip for the majority of the fight. Once he starts shooting lasers is when we summon our guide, who gets eliminated just a few minutes later, and now is the time we start spamming our incantations. The fight in total took about 15 minutes and 41 seconds. With Placidusax down, we now level up, for it is time to go and face Melania. For the first part of phase 1, we attack with only the whip. There is a distance between you and Melania that allows you to attack her safely with the roll attack of the whip. But once she starts using waterfowl dance, we switch up to our holy hone bolt till we hit the second phase. Always have to be careful for any stray waterfowl attack. Once we hit phase 2, it's time to bring out the big ol' rock and start throwing it at her.
prayer directed at her, she falls, and we beat Melania. With the fight taking about 22 minutes and 18 seconds, and I had to do two retries. Now we farm to reach the level limit I usually stop at for challenge runs, which is 125. We fight the glitchy tree spirit to progress Millicent's quest. Gowry tells us to kill her, so we refuse and help her instead. This fight was surprisingly easier than it usually is. And with the final interaction with Millicent, we pray with a moment of silence. Eliminate a sinner. And now we must eliminate a more blasphemous sinner, so we go back into the Unholy Academy. Get captured to reach a lower part of Volcano Manor. And make a jump to gain access to Prison Town. Now Jesus shall roll through the lava and fight the Godskin Noble here. With our runes, we buy a bunch of boiled crabs that I never end up using. Take the teleport, and now we fight the serpent and Rykard the Lord of Blasphemy. First phase of the fight was pure melee. Has to be near perfect in order to conserve health and FP flasks. For phase 2, after determining which incantation seems more effective, we settle at throwing stones at Rykard. Damn, the tracking for the rocks are pretty damn bad sometimes. Now with the snake head active again, we can damage it with the whip again. Thank god because I ran out of FP for the last section of the fight.
Honestly, I felt like I made a lot of mistakes during the fight and also had quite a few close calls as well. And I am very surprised that I was able to do this all in one try. With that said, the fight took about one hour and three minutes. Now we take out Bernal real quick. And finish off the last few optional stuff that we have to do. So we go to Necron to fight Anti-Jesus and take him out real quick. Also the Regal Ancestor Spirit gets demolished by our Holiness. And with those two done, we now go and fight Malekith. We summon our Holy Helper, but he absolutely gets dunked on in the beginning of the fight. In the second phase, we just simply threw rocks whenever he finished an attack and dodged his blade as much as I could have. And with the final rock, Malekith is defeated, with the fight taking about 13 minutes and 3 seconds. And I also had to retry once. With Malekith down and the capital turned to ash, we go and check if Bok is safe, which he is. Then pick up the rune of the perfect order, the order of God. Bless thy soul, gold mask, ye who has saw the light even at the end. Blessed V. Now we go check up on Brother Corn. <laughs> and even if you do not understand, I shall still pray for you. Now onwards to finish the game. It's time to eradicate Gideon. With Melania's spell, he leaves himself very vulnerable, which makes this very easy. And the fight with Gideon took about 1 minute and 19 seconds. With Gideon down, we now summon Nefeli to help us against Godfrey. With Nefeli and the Holy Hawk Spirit taking Godfrey's attention, we throw our stones for some good damage. For phase 2, Nefeli does a good amount of damage at the start before becoming an astronaut. And the rest of the fight was attacking whenever he took too long in his attack animations.
The fight with Godfrey took about 6 minutes and 31 seconds. With Godfrey down, I take one final look at my build. And now we are off to fight the final bosses. For Radagon, our spirit gave a very good amount of opportunities for damage. But with our aid gone, we are now stuck dealing with Radagon alone. Radagon is, as always, pretty spammy with his holy attacks. But after a bunch of dodging and precise rock throws, we take down Radagon. and move on to the Elden Beast. With Elden Beast being pretty weak to physical damage, we used our whip for the start of the fight. And when enough of its health is gone, is when I start growing rocks. And with some final words from Jesus, the Elden Beast is defeated, with the fight taking about 23 minutes and 58 seconds. Now we pray to the Father and enact the true and perfect order, under the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great, we've beaten the game as Jesus. Now that the run is over, I have to say, it was a pretty fun play. Without talismans and wondrous physics, the game hits a bit different, but it was a neat added challenge to the run. When it comes to damage, our giant rock incantation is what did most of the hurting in our arsenal. But I tried to mix in other incantations, because just resorting to rock growing would be pretty boring. I did as much as I could have in quests, but I wish I could have done a few more things like Raya's quest, but that's locked behind assassination quests. And Jesus ain't about that. Also, I couldn't fight Lich Dragon, so that's unfortunate. But we did fight a majority of main bosses, so I'm satisfied with that. 
I also wanted to use Lord's Divine Fortification for the final fight, but I unfortunately forgot. Anyway, this run was fun, and you should give it a try. Well then, this has been Warnog Gamer 4. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell notification for alerts when I post a new video. And thanks for watching this video and my previous videos if you have as well. Later.